This is Huey the Huey Bin. Huey, E-W-W-I. It stands for everything wrong with it, and it was given the name Huey by an admin over on Worm Composting UK over on Facebook. The bin looks good now, but over the next 12 months, everything that shouldn't happen to, and everything that shouldn't be done to a worm bin, is going to happen to this bin. It's going to be 12 months of gross mismanagement, just to see how the worms get along because I suspect these guys are going to manage an awful lot better than we ever give them credit for. Hello again. So I'm going to set the UE bin up with the glass recycling containers that I get free of the local council. You can ask your council about these. Every now and then they they're taken out of service because they become old or cracked or the lids are lost or broken and they withdraw them from service so they make absolutely excellent worm bins inside measurements are 17 and a half inches by 12 and a half inches and it's 11 and a half inches deep so it's quite a small worm bin and it's got four tiny little holes one in each corner which will help with drainage now into this bin the first layer is going to be just a sheet of cardboard which I've already wet down And on top of that, I've been out in the street and I've swept up half a bucket of leaves. They're going to be chucked in on top of the cardboard and I'm just going to add a little bit of water to the leaves to wet them down a bit. Next, it's up to where I have the pile of horse manure ready for next year's compost. And it's full of red wrigglers. So I'm going to pick a handful. I'm if you've watched any of my other videos you know I always start with a very small amount of worms in any kind of experimental worm bin and that's for two reasons one is that uh, if anything goes horrifically wrong not that many worms are going to be negatively affected and secondly it's fantastic and fascinating to me to watch the worm population grow so I've taken some of the manure and about 30 worms or so they're all at different stages of life some adults some juveniles there might be some European night crawlers in there as well. But they're mostly red wigglers and they're mostly at different stages. And I've taken the uh, horse manure that they're used to because that will help them to settle instantly into their new bin because they're basically coming along with the environment that they're used to. So in total, maybe something like about 30 worms. And these are going to be just unceremoniously tipped in on top of the leaves. And then I'm just going to smooth everything out, make a nice flat surface. And really, there you have it. There is one worm bin up and running in a matter of a few minutes. So this worm bin, for the duration of the year, is going to live in the lean-to. So it's protected from the rain, but it will not have any insulation. It will not have any other form of protection. It will be totally exposed to the cold, or however cold the lean-to gets, which of course, because it's a lean-to, it's open. The only thing it has on it is a roof, and that will keep the rain and snow and sleet out of the bin. Now we'll take a look at the temperature. So this is the temperature of the bedding. That's, when we talk about temperature, that's the temperature we're interested in. Not the ambient temperature outside and around the bin. It's what is the temperature in the bin, and that's around 10, 11 degrees this is the 10th of October when I set the worm bin up and I wanted to set the bin up as we were coming into winter because that's probably one of the most difficult times to actually try and manage a worm bin especially if your worm bins are outside and smaller ones are less forgiving than bigger ones what I'm doing here is I'm taking samples of the bedding at different points in the bin and at different depths in the bin because I want to establish the pH it should be neutral, it's horse manure. But one of the reasons I want to do this is at some point in the future, as the bin gets more established, I'm going to add quite acidic material to the bin. Because one of the claims I want to test is that by adding a lot of citrus material or acidic material, you will turn the bedding acidic and the worms will leave. I have reason to doubt that based on my own observations. Now, the pH is 7 which is what we expected. 
and what I suspect happens is that the bedding buffers itself in a way it has a natural balance and the natural balance of a manure bedding is seven and it will aim to keep going back to that even if I add acidic material to it this is around the middle of November and you can see the temperature is five degrees C and the worms are quite close to the surface they're working on a melon rind that they were giving us a little bit of a treat a little housewarming we here we are now in December and it's night time and the bedding temperature is quite low I can't read that now and I didn't make it note. but again it's around three or four degrees C the worms are a little bit further down and you know this is what the worms will do they'll stay away from the edges of the bin and they'll go deeper down into the center of the bin and they'll keep themselves warm they will survive this is the 23rd of January and it's absolutely freezing we had a the temperature really plummeted here that was a seed tray outside which is completely frozen and the temperature in the Yui bin is just about one degree C 40 degrees Fahrenheit something like that there's a cocoon the worms are surprisingly close to the surface and very active they don't seem to be making any attempt at all to either leave the bin or to uh, go deeper I thought they'd be a lot deeper at this stage considering how cold it is and keep in mind there's no insulation on this bin whatsoever it is as it is it's just sitting in the lean-to but you can see the groups of worms very active there's a little springtail hitching a ride on the back of that worm there and here we are up to date this is the 28th of January it's around half past midnight much warmer night but it's pouring down with rain so we'll take an up-to-date look at the bin the bedding is around 10 degrees C that's to be expected because the air surrounding the bin in the lean-to is warmer the plastic has probably warmed up a little bit as well that's going to warm up the bedding and there's also a small amount of food in the bin and as that breaks down and decomposes that's going to warm up the bin as well the bedding I should say it'll warm the bedding up worms are not silly they will look after themselves and that is really the purpose of this series it's primarily to reassure people who are new to composting with worms there are an awful lot of the things that you probably just naturally worry about. There really is no need to worry. So you've seen this bin now. You saw how I set it up. It's been running since the 10th of October. October, November, December, and we're now almost at the end of January. The daytime temperatures never really got a much above 10. And the nighttime temperatures have been very cold to freezing. And you saw the temperatures in the bedding. So the medium that the worms are actually living in has been as low as one and probably it could have even been lower on nights that I didn't check it but the idea of checking the temperature throughout these winter months and early spring months is to show you that the worms will be active they will look after themselves they will reproduce you saw cocoons this bin is actually full of cocoons and considering I started with about 30 worms, there's much more than 30 worms in this bin now. So they've been reproducing in the cold. I'm really happy with how healthy and active the worms still are. Now, it is true that they will slow down in the cold temperature. That is a fact. But I'm just trying to show you that you don't need to worry about insulation, especially if your bins are outside. You don't need to excessively worry about bedding temperature, as long as it's not an actual block of ice. Your worms will manage. Now, you can see my breath there. I'm, I actually think it might be warmer in the bedding of the worm bin than, than it is outside. And the other purpose of this bin, there's another nice cocoon. The other purpose of this bin really is to look a little bit more closely at the things that we read so this bin will not get any grit at any point because one of the things that you read everywhere is that you must add grit to the worm bin that you you know the worms won't survive without grit they have a gizzard so it's an actual fact that they need grit I contend that they actually find the grit in their environment. How else did they survive for millions of years? There wasn't anybody walking behind piles of horse poop in fields adding grit to it. So, to my simple mind, the worms must be able to cope. They need to get grit, that is a fact, but they 
are able to somehow source and find that grid themselves. Now, that is not to say, I want to be really clear about this, I am not saying don't add grit. I'm not saying let your worm bins freeze. I am not saying add a ton of acidic material all in one go to your worm bin. After all, what are you going to do with your ground up eggshells? Of course you're going to add them to the bin and of course they'll be used as grit. That isn't what this is about. It's not to say don't do certain things. It's to try and tell you don't worry about certain things because your worms will be absolutely fine. So over the course of this coming year, I'll be trying to change the pH of the bedding. I don't think that I'm, I'm going to succeed in that. I'm going to be testing the worms' reactions to things that you're told constantly don't add to your bin. Don't add tomatoes, don't add pineapple, don't add onions. Anybody who's been working, running a worm bin for quite some time will know that they're not really an issue at all, even in small worm bins. As long as the worms can have enough room to stay away from something that they do not like, they will be fine. So we'll be testing that out. We'll be testing how they do with no grit. We'll be looking at how they're reproducing. So that was it really. I'm going to try and do a monthly update. We're going to focus on temperature until things get warmer because the bedding will naturally just warm up as well. Um, as I add more food and as the bedding matter increases, I think the, the overall bedding temperature will increase with that. So, but definitely for February and March, we're going to continue to look at temperature. There's been no grid added to this and the bin has been running for three to four months now. We'll have a look next month and see how the worms are doing, but they're certainly not showing any negative effects of not having grit. And I've got a few other things that I want to look at a little bit more closely. So I hope you join me in Huey the Huey Worm Bins Adventures. Okay, as always, thanks for watching. Stay safe and well. Bye for now. Bye.